Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of our podcast show. I have a very special guest with me. You might not have heard of him, but we did have mutual friends and I just want to give you a brief background since many of you have been asking um, you know, about how to get started in commercial real estate or also how to expand your portfolio. Well, since our last guest, David Lindahl, um, many of you have you know, said, hey, how can I get started and how can I grow this and how can I make it easier? So I brought in the next best thing <laughs> and that's Bob Bowman. Bob, so good to have you here on the show. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, well, thank you, Nathan. I, you know, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to, um, you know, your audience on uh, multifamily and um, underwriting, and uh, you know. But first, I, you know, I thought maybe just uh, relate to your audience to give you a little bit of a, a background. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I was actually in in corporate sales for a long time. I sold copiers, and for those of wow. of your um, investors out there that are getting started, you know, I knew nothing about real estate. Um, started doing some single family homes, got myself educated. Uh, I live actually here in Orlando, Florida, okay. and been here mm-hmm. for over 30 years. And so we just started, you know, learning how to buy properties. And, and then in 2007, 2006, you know, began the real estate crisis. And so uh, I basically had to start all over. I, we tried to sell all the properties that we had you know, just like other people that were in the business, I had actually quit my job. So I got to a point where, you know, I lost, I didn't have a job, mm-hmm. didn't have any properties, didn't know what I was gonna do, uh, but I knew I needed to do something else. And I, you know, certainly I was, you know, I was in debt quite a bit, you know, from the business I was in. And so that about that time I met uh, David Lindahl, I guess, who was your guest last week. Yeah. And uh, uh, David had a private money, uh, uh, boot camp, I guess he called it, and right. back in 2007, and I attended his very first one, December 2007. You might even been well, there, Nathan. Well, actually, I want everybody to know this because, interesting enough, I told everybody last time that, you know, when I was working for Dave, I, I basically worked on the phones for the first year and a half, you know, and I was talking to a lot of the students that were coming in. I went to all the boot camps. So the funny thing is, Bob, we were probably in the same room, but never really got to meet each other. So yeah, I was at that first, I was at that first uh, syndication event, and then I think a few years later, um, probably maybe five years later or so, Dave actually had me come out and speak at one of his syndication events because I was raising money uh, for properties as well. So um, yeah, so we were at the same event at the same time. <laughs> well, I wouldn't doubt that. Uh, so I went to that event and of course, you know, it was, um, you know, really tough period of time here in the country. And I learned uh, uh, with my cell background, I taught myself what to say and how to talk to people to raise private money. But the only problem is that I didn't know anything about apartments. <laughs> I've never been to one of his classes. So, oh, wow. so I went out and started talking to people and I had over a million dollars of accredited investor Whoa. forms signed. Wait, 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 hold on. Bob, we just got to stop there because I know this is a hot topic for a lot of people, especially in this group, you know, in our in our audience. Um, so most people, they go learn the real estate side of it first and they try to, you know, learn the ins and outs. You did almost the opposite. You went for the funding first, which I think is a better way to go first and actually complies with SEC. So you went for funding first and you got $1 million? I had $1.1 million in a credit investor form. Wow. So... Um, but I didn't know anything about apartments. So I, I looked at Ari Mentor up and I found out they were going to have a class in Atlanta. Wow. You know, uh, so we went from December to private money to about March, uh, four months later. And I told my wife, um, I said, you know, honey, David Lindahl is going to have a class in Atlanta. I really need to go there. And she goes, you know, she said, Bob, she said, you know, we can't afford to go there. And I said, Honey, I said, we can't afford not to go there. So I took everything else left I had on my credit card. I drove eight hours to Atlanta because that's all I could afford to do at the time. And that's where I uh, I met Dave Lindahl, you know, at his apartment boot camp. So on the second day, I had my accredited investor forms in my hands, (laughs) you know, so I went up to Dave. I said, David, uh, I said, Mr. Lindahl, Mr. Lindahl, my name is Bob Bowman. And I was at your private money camp about four months ago in December. And I just wanted to thank you wow. for everything that, you know, that you taught me because 
Since then, I've been able to raise over a million dollars. I have the accredited investor forms right here. And so Dave was on stage. People were coming in and, and this is a true story. He said, you did what? I said, I raised over a million dollars. I just wanted to thank you. And he goes, he goes, well, how did you do that? <laughs> and so I looked at David. I was perplexed. I said, David, I just did what you said. He goes, right. well, what did I say? And then he goes, never mind, never mind. I need to talk to you. I'm going to call you up on stage. And then that was the very beginning of our relationship. Wow. And wow. since then, I learned how to, um, uh, I learned about apartments. Wow. And, wow. Um, and then from there, that first meeting became an acquaintance and then we became a friendship and then a business relationship. And Dave and I are partners in a company called Lindman Commercial LLC for Bob Bowman and Dave Linda. And we buy apartments and we own office together as well. And we do. And, and, and today I, I actually teach the private money boot camp for David and the commercial class. So, uh, yeah, we've come a long way since 2000 and, uh, 2007 2008 that's amazing that's amazing you know so, it's funny you mentioned that um it brings back to memory of how i met dave because um i was actually at my local ria and one of the things that had happened was there was someone else who had said hey nathan has done all these deals and he came up to me and he, and it's funny he said the same thing he said uh he said hey I need you to call my office on Monday. <laughs> and, uh, and literally the next thing I know, I'm working for him, you know? So it, it's, he, he, that's one thing about him. He does take action quickly. So what happened after that event? Well, after that event, uh, once I learned how to underwrite uh, apartments and uh, knew a little bit about the business, I actually signed up for their coaching program because I wanted to accelerate my education and about six months after that, in 2009, in January, it was when Obama was um, coming into office. Bush was leaving. We were losing 500,000 jobs a month. Right. I bought my very first apartment six months into the program in wow. Texas. And, of course, everybody was saying, Bob, what are you doing? Don't you know what's going on with real estate? You know, all these foreclosures. And, you, you know, what do you know about Texas? You've never been there. Why should I give you money? Uh, and over that period of time, I raised the, the, the actual raise on that apartment. It was outside of Fort Worth, Texas, was one million dollars that I raised over the over the Christmas holidays during that period of time. And I bought that first property for three point four million and sold it for six point eight million uh, seven years later. And that's how I got started. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to you know to share with your audience. And one of the things, one of the most valuable lessons that I've, that I've learned that has helped me with my business to raise money, because what we do, you know, every day I think about, okay, who can I talk to? Cause I'm constantly looking for money and I'm also looking for deals. That's all I think about every day, where I can I find an opportunity and where can I fill that opportunity with accredited investors? Yeah. And so yeah. I realized that the most effective thing that has, that I do is to understand how to underwrite my deals. Because when you know your deals and you talk to prospective investors or you talk to your lender or you talk to uh, you know other people, you know if you understand your numbers and you understand your deal, it gives confidence in other people Thanks. that you, know, you understand what you do and they're more likely to wanna to participate with you as a partner and give you money for your deal. So to me, uh, underwriting and putting together the deal is something that I've always enjoyed doing because I love putting together deals. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it's really important that you understand how to, how to go about it and how to underwrite it sufficiently. Um, so one of the, one of the things when I got started uh, and this is how I get most of all my credibility, you know, is, is through my underwriting. I remember when I first started looking at deals and my wife, who has an accounting background and was a forensic accountant, she works, has worked in real estate all her life with some very successful investors uh, around the country. Okay. Uh, she said to me, she said, Bob, she said, <clears throat> You know, if you're going to be successful buying commercial real estate and buying these apartments, she said, 
you need to understand how to read the numbers. And I go, okay. I said, but I don't think I understand what you mean to read the numbers. She goes, she goes, well, let me give you an example. It's like reading a book. She said, you know, a book contains words. And when you put those words together, it forms a sentence and a sentence is a complete thought. And once you put those complete thoughts together into a paragraph, it starts to tell a story and you read through the chapter. And as you put the words and the sentences together and you tell the story, you get to the end of your book and either you like the book or you didn't like the book or it was just OK. But, you know, you, now you know how it's going to end. She goes, it's the same way when you're underwriting your apartment. You have to understand how to read the numbers. And I says, well, OK, I hear what you're saying, but that still doesn't make sense to me. She says, well, you have numbers from zero to nine. She goes, it's the same thing. And when you put those numbers together, they start to tell a story. And as then as you read through all of the numbers, then at the very end, you look at it and see, you know, is this an investment that I want to do? And, and I said, OK, well, I get that part, but I still don't quite understand. And then she said, here is the key. When you look at a number, any given number, whether you're looking at repair and maintenance number, you know, you're looking at contract services number, you just see one big number there. The question is this, where did that number come from? What makes up that number? For example, here's an easy one, payroll. You see a payroll number that the uh, seller has shown you on his financial, but what makes up that number? How many people does he have? What are they getting paid? Is he paying benefits? Um, you know, how is he operating his property? And you can learn a lot from that number by understanding what makes up that number. So when I underwrite a deal and I look at an opportunity, I look at every single number that somebody gives me because it's important that I understand where it came from. So uh, that's what I, I spend most of my, my my time doing. That's you bring up some great points here, um, and I think a lot of people don't really focus on this part of real estate when they get started. I think a lot of people will focus on you know where's the market, where am I going to find a good deal, and so I want to ask you this question: Does it matter where exactly the deal is, or do the numbers matter to reflect? you know, hey, this is a potentially good deal. So is it market or over numbers? Both. Um, and, and, and they're both equal because, you know, you can buy a great deal, but if it's not in a, you know, a great location because you're affected by the market, if you pay too much for it compared to what the other competitors in that same class, if you're buying apartments, you know, if everybody's rents are lower and you pay too much for that asset, that could that could hurt you, or if you're in an area where uh, you know you don't, it, you know it's not a growth area where you have an opportunity to build the business. It's really important to understand the demographics in the area because, as an owner of an apartment, you can go in and pretty it up. You know you can paint the outside, you can improve the interiors, and and those are all things as owners that you and I can do. But the one thing, Nathan, that we cannot do. We cannot affect the market around us and what's happened immediately around us. Sure. So sure. in that case, you know, that part is out of our control. So, you know, what's left is the purchase price and how you execute after you purchase. But when you get into a deal in like in anything, you have to buy it correctly. And so the numbers are the first things that we look at. So a lot of people don't go into like uh, a degree program or, you know, a, you know, they're not maybe working. I think you said your wife was in working already in, in real estate on the, you know, uh, number side of things, let's say. Uh, did you say, I'm sorry, did you say she was an analyst? Uh, well, she was uh, an accounting person, a financial forensic. person. And, yeah, forensic and, yeah. Accounting. and then she yeah. was a forensic accountant for four years. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people don't have that background. So what was... What was what would you say to someone who is maybe like really struggling with the numbers, you know, getting, you know, getting started in this business or, you know, whether they're acquiring their first property? I mean, you you got the you had all the private money, uh, you know, lined up, but then you were like, OK, I got to find the property. I got to make sure the numbers work. So what would be what, what, how did you overcome that challenge? 
Well, um, first of all, you have to look at a lot of deals and you have to, you know, you have to, uh, uh, there's several things. First of all, you have to know what your, what a good deal looks like to you. You know, what is your targets? What are your financial targets? What is your business model? Are you looking for a 10% cash return? What are you going to pay your investors? What kind of annualized rate of return over the whole period do you want to achieve when you look at your cash returns and your equity? So you have to have some goals and some targets to know that if my underwriting can achieve these numbers, then this is going to be a deal for me. And again, we're just purely talking about numbers, looking at income and expenses. Um, so uh, when I look at uh, different financials and for people that are starting and I remember some of the financials from the sellers can be very uh, involved and complicated and so what I do I just take a step back and I think about okay on this financial what is income what is expense what do I have left and if you break it down like that as you're getting started and you're looking at it you know, you're looking at any financial, that's what you want to do to say, okay, well, if I have this much money left, you know, is there enough money left that I can pay my investors and I can make some money afterwards? I try to break it down to the very simplest form mm. uh, because that's what it all is. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, what's the cap rate or, uh, you know, and that's, a, that's an important number. But to me, the most important number that I stay focused on is the cash, the cash flow. You know how much cash flow? Where's the money? Yeah, yeah. You know, and and those so, are those yeah, are some yeah, important yeah. numbers. I know someone coming into the business and acquiring maybe their first, second, or third property. Um, the sometimes that can be a little bit overwhelming, or maybe they're doing it in Excel, or they downloaded a template off off the internet, or something like that. They got it from another investor. Um, but you know, there's a lot of different resources out there. And I know, I remember you telling me at a, in a previous time when we talked that you said, you know, that was a big struggle for you. And then working with Dave kind of, you know, I think you said something like when you were working with Dave, you said, what can we do to streamline this? What can we do to make this easier for us to acquire properties? Is that how it went? Is that how it happened? Um, yeah, well, you, you mean in terms of um, how we underwrote our deals and what we were using as as a tool at that time? Yeah, uh, to, you said to, to be more effective. Right, to be yeah. more effective in your numbers, yeah. Yeah, so what happens is I look at a, a lot of deals, and one of the things that happened about seven years ago, um, the market started to heat up in the apartment side of it, and uh, you know, after the economic crisis, you know, people were shying away from offices, a lot of the big REITs and equity companies, a lot of investors uh, in general, you know, they had money to place. And so that people started to realize rather quickly that apartments was the way to do it. And so as it got more and more difficult to hit our uh, financial model, um, you know, we decided to go out and buy um, uh, a co commercial real estate. You know, we bought an office building in Dallas and we bought um, an entire office park in, in Charlotte that by the way, even through COVID, they're both doing extremely well. Um, and so uh, we use our same financial model that we use when we look at an apartment. Uh, but uh, the, the problem was um, you know, there's there, there, there's a premier software package out there that all of the REITs use, um, the big equity companies, et cetera. It's a, it's, it's a very um, extensive software product to analyze deals. It doesn't matter if you have an apartment or commercial property. Um, and so I bought that and so did David so we could analyze, you know, commercial real estate. So for your audience, you know, if you own an apartment or are just getting started, or if you own a number of apartments and you start to grow your business, you know, one of the things you're going to want is that you're going to want to have an office. And so instead of going out and leasing an office, why don't you just buy the building and let the tenants pay for your lease? You get cash flow and you build equity at the same point in time. And now you have an office for your people. You That's have three or four true. people now, right? That's very true. And so, and so uh, the product that we bought, um, after we've paid several thousands of dollars uh, was discontinued about a year and a half later. So we went out into the market 
and we started looking for products and we couldn't find one that could provide us the ability to look at many different types of properties. So um, we got, I got frustrated. I just told David, I said, David, you know what? I'm just going to go create our own. I'm just going to create our own software product. Wow. And, and that's, that's, what that's, no, that's no easy feat to go out and create your own software. <laughs> that is a challenge. <laughs> Well, I, I knew I, I'm not a technical person, so sure, but sure. I knew I, I knew a lot about underwriting, and I felt okay. that I knew what I wanted at the end, and um, and so I hired a programmer in Tampa, and we hired a, a senior programmer overseas in India, and for eight months around the clock, they just programmed and programmed them, you know, and 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 so we put together and eventually became a product called uh, Commercial Underwriter. Um, and, and so, you know, it, it's a cloud-based product. And, you know, one of the things also that I might mention, Nathan, is that one of the things that happened, a lot of the spreadsheets that I saw over a period of time accidentally get modified. I've accidentally done, done that myself. Mm-hmm. And I had a, a true story. One of Dave's students had owned a couple thousand apartments, uh, brought us a deal that was like over $19 million dollars. And, um, you know, and, and it was a nice looking apartment deal. And so when he sent over his underwriting in Excel, I, you know, cause I always manually calculate everything, you know, cause I love doing the numbers. I realized that his formulas were incorrect. So not only was that incorrect, but the way he calculated his property taxes to make a long story short from that 19 million, the real value of that apartment was 11 million. Oh, it was, wow. it was significantly different. So, uh, I called the guy up and I and I said, hey, by the way, is this the uh, software you've been using, the Excel spreadsheet you've been using, you know, to do all your deals? He goes, yeah. He goes, well, do you like the property? And I said, well, I don't know. I said, uh, he goes, what do you mean you don't know? I said, well, your formulas are all incorrect. And right now this property is only worth $11 million. No wonder that seller took your $19 million offer. Oh, wow. So this, oh. this guy had $250,000 of earnest money. And it took about three weeks to straighten that out, but he went back to the seller and he got his earnest money back. Wow. And just in time, I mean, it was just in time. And I, and I talked to David about it and said, David, you know, I see this all the time, you know, so one, you know, and, and I'm, I'm even guilty of it. So when I, when I decided to create commercial underwriter, that was one of the things I may not like the numbers, but I know that the results and what I'm looking at is correct. So um, that's kind of a little bit of background behind uh, yeah. how we got yeah. to, to, to the product. Yeah, I think I think that can get overwhelming sometimes. I mean, I've been guilty of it, like even you said. Like there's been times where I had um, an Excel spreadsheet that I used on a different property and the form, some of the formulas were incorrect when I had sent it over. So I was just like, oh, no, you know, and, and that can happen. Right. It's it's uh, it's not really embarrassing for me. I mean, maybe the first time it was, you know, but I got over it quick. But um, it, it can be cumbersome and you're like, oh, OK, how am I going to do this and all that? And then I've also hired people to actually do that job, you know, because I, I as much as I love the real estate side of it, sometimes like number crunching for me, some days gives me a headache. <laughs> like you love it. Some days it gives me a headache. But um, so it's really valuable. I could understand why the software is so valuable to help speed up the process. What would you say on average? Does it does your software, does it speed up the underwriting process, you know, from, you know, some people it may take an hour or, you know, 45 minutes. Does it speed up the process in any way? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I do want to say uh, when I created this, Nathan, is that I only really created it for myself. I didn't put it out there for anybody else to use. Okay. You know, it wasn't going to be marketed. And so when the creation of the product, when I dummied it up for myself, I have certain blocks highlighted uh, in yellow, and I can show a, a little bit of it, uh, just the, in general, uh, the concept behind it. But I, I, everything in a bright yellow is an input screen. And whether that input is zero or something else, it's something that I know I need to pay attention to. Um, and so once you have written, you know, several, a number of deals, and depending upon the complexity of the seller's financial uh, I had an intern from the University of Central Florida that worked with me for about two years, and he could take a 300-unit apartment deal and underwrite it in about 20 minutes with 10-year returns, all the financial returns and metrics and everything. 
uh, put his value play in there. Wow. Uh, wow. And so, yeah, it's very, very efficient. And if you're looking at, you know, uh, if you want to buy a commercial office building or some kind of retail or something that square footage analysis, see, we have unit based analysis and square footage. I do both on square footage is very similar to apartments, but you just have a few other calculations that you don't see in apartments. So the way I tested this out, I would give my granddaughter, she was eight years old. I would give her an OM on a commercial office building with 20 tenants and I'd have her input the data. So, and, and that's what she would do. That's how I knew that, okay, if she can do it. <laughs> I was going to say, how old, is, how old is your granddaughter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally, I, I, you know, I did. And she actually found a mistake in a broker package. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> that we did. Yeah. So, you know, so the integrity of the product and what I'm doing, you know, it's so important to be efficient, to be comprehensive. And also when you're showing this to in other investors, uh, you know, a confused mind says no. So I wanted to have enough sophistication in it for my lender and any equity companies, the more sophisticated investor. But I also needed to be simplistic so that somebody working a full time job that has an IRA that you want to present your your data to, you know, understands what it is, you know, clearly so that, you know, you can capture that investor into your deal. That's a good point. I'm actually, I'm actually on the website right now and, and I'll share this as well with everybody. But I love how it says simple input, sophisticated output. I love that because yeah. I think for a lot of people, you know, who are getting started in the underwriting process can be not only daunting or overwhelming, but like they want to make sure their numbers are right. I hear that all the time. Like, hey, are my numbers right? And I love how this, you know, how simple it is to use. That's great. Yeah. Well, you know, it, you know that, you know, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, that's my tagline because that was, again, part of the development uh, idea behind it. You know, it had to be simplistic. Uh, and efficient. Um, so what I what I do, Nathan, uh, on a side note for my users, I do free education on underwriting. Okay. I do two. I usually do two learning labs every month on underwriting and some portion of underwriting or maybe something important that you need to know about. I just did one this week on how deals are getting done, how they're structuring their distributions, how they're a lot of investors that are buying today and are getting started are moving into more of a fee-based type of a distribution. And so I'm actually gonna be incorporating all this into my software, but I do two learning labs and then it's cloud-based, it's a subscription. And then um, uh, all of the updates that I do every year, there's no cost for them. And that's a big deal. That's great. So free, free technical support, no cost. And that's how it's set up. Where can someone, um, I mean, I, I want to post the website, but where can someone go to learn about the learning labs? Is that when they become a user of the software, yes. they, they get involved in those learning labs every month? Yep. They get involved and, uh, you know, and uh, if, if somebody wants to, um, is interested in the product and you know and mentions your name i'd be happy to send them a free bonus uh you know some of the most important learning labs that i've done uh, i take every component and i've uh, over the last two years i you know you know i break it out i go into great depth and the learning labs are only 30 minutes long they're nuggets yeah. of you know, content you know that you know there's no no sell just important things that as you know, that 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 you need to know or consider when you're doing your underwriting, because uh, my goal is to make everybody uh, the best underwriter that they can possibly be and identify deals. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, that's that, that's my goal. And of course, that's what I do every day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Learning from someone who does it every day. That's like you're not you're not working with someone who has potential. You're working with someone who has experience and that's really important <laughs> so yeah yeah that's that's fantastic so what i'm going to do is i'm going to post a link uh below here commercialunderwriter.net that way everybody you know who's who's in need get into this software get into the labs they can help them you know underwrite their properties a lot faster 
um, and uh, with simple input and sophisticated output. Um, <laughs> Bob, I know this is something that everybody is kind of talking about right now, um, and we'll conclude with this final question. What 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 do you see about the current market and the state of how things are going now that we're you know maybe we're seeing some light at the end of the tunnel with vaccines being pushed around and stuff? But what what's what's your uh, projections for where the market is, and what should someone do right now if for their investing? Well, I, first of all, I, you know, that's a great question. I think that um, these reserves that the agencies and other lenders are now putting into their underwriting is something that you need to do on every deal. Uh, what that means is that whatever your mortgage is, principal and interest, even if you're going to try to get an interest only for two or three years, lenders are wanting principal and interest, especially Fannie and Freddie. It's a requirement of 12 months of uh, principal and interest. And so that 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 needs to be part of what uh, you need to consider in there. And now, depending on the loan amount, you know, it can be nine months of principal and interest. And I um, so I would stay in really close contact with my mortgage broker or somebody that finances apartments all the time, you know, because things change. But my outlook on this is that the I call it COVID reserves uh, because these reserves never came about until March of uh, last year. Yeah. You know, when uh, you know, when the at that time that the president. Uh, and the country went into this moratorium on March the 27th without you being able to evict. And that's when the reserves started. And so I don't think that those reserves are going to change uh, in 2021. And they may even be going on longer than that. Uh, my mortgage broker yesterday told me, he goes, Bob, don't think that these uh, reserves are going to go away anytime soon because they're not. So, you know, that would probably be I, I think that in general, um, you know, multifamily, you know, there's such a high demand and uh, for them that they're still going to be very vibrant and robust. Uh, I think the outlook it, for that is good. Right now, the hottest property types and have been is industrial and multifamily. So if you're in uh, in one of those two, uh, those are really great markets where you can really make some money. You know, if you can find the deal, you know, that meets your model. So. I'm, I'm pretty up on, on everything. I just go into it, you know, very cautiously. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, we have to get through, get, get the herd uh, vaccinated enough so that everybody can return to work. And I don't really see that happening until the fall where we're going to start loosening up a little bit. But, um, you know, I really stay in contact with your mortgage broker when you're underwriting a deal um, so that you make sure that all of your costs uh, and what the lender's doing. Right now, it's really predominantly, uh, if you're doing a Fannie Mae, a Freddie Mac, or some kind of an agency financing, they're gonna they're gonna require it. CMBS loans, um, I haven't seen that creep in yet. Some bridge loans are requiring um, COVID reserves. Other bridge loan lenders are not if your property's not stabilized. So it really depends on the lender. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for that insight, because I know that's also coming from your experience and you're doing this on a regular and daily basis. So thank you for that insight, because I know it's kind of a, a big topic of discussion. It's a lot of question marks around that, especially, you know, with, you know, should I should I invest now? Should I wait until I think I think always the best answer is don't wait. Just get started. Right. And uh, yeah. I, I love how you started in your story. Thank you for sharing that and how you started with you know, raising the money first and then finding the property. Good problem to have for sure. <laughs> That's a great problem. You know, one last thing, Nathan, yeah. if I may, you know, your, your viewers may be wanting to know, well, what does the software cost? Yeah. Uh, if I can, if I may share that, Absolutely. Um, the, the very first year and only the first year in order to, to buy the software or to uh, subscribe, not purchase, but subscribe to the software, is 1995 that's $1,995 one time. After the first 12 months, you can elect to do a $99 per month or get a 25% discount and pay $895 for another entire year of subscription and learning labs and support and all yeah. of that. Yeah. That's, that's the price structure. Great. Great. Thank you for that. That's that's actually a lot cheaper than a lot of commercial 
uh, software is on the marketplace for <laughs> underwriting software. That's I think yeah. that's like fifty to sixty percent off. <laughs> so, yes. Oh yeah. 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 It's uh, you know, and, and and we haven't found anything yet uh, unless something has come up within the last year that does. You know, both the square footage analysis, you know, outside of the one big product I mentioned earlier, and also the unit based, because in unit based on the software, you can do mobile home parks or storage units. I know a lot of apartment investors that have decided to take that knowledge and use it to buy student housing or some yeah. other form or, you know, even buy their own, um, you know, building, you know, near their home. Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, for their office. So, wow. uh, but anyway, yeah. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing and being so generous and, and sharing not only your experience, your software, and also your story. Um, I, I know your story is just inspirational and in how, you know, you started out just getting interested and now you're working with one of the, you know, you guys are the top real estate investors in the country. I mean, owning a lot of, a, a lot of units. How many, you guys are over 8,000 now? Is that what I recall? Is that the number? Well, that was uh, the total uh, combined over the time frame. Yeah. yeah so about 8,500 total. That's fantastic. Plus, but, and we own a couple hundred thousand, not, not a lot in commercial uh, real estate commercial as well. Real estate, yeah. Yeah. And we're hoping to expand that too, because we really like uh, that single uh, story office. Um, we really like that model because it uh, it will allow you as an investor to acquire a very wide and deep tenant profile and at, at a great price point. So those property types built in the 80s and 90s, single story office, it's like a hybrid between an office and a flex. It's not an office, but somewhere in the middle there. And, you know, we've got retail and wholesale and financing and technology. And, you know, I mean, it takes every industry and it's a very stable uh, product that we really like. And we're doing extremely well with that. So we're really looking to buy more. And my software, of course, underwrites all of that. Yeah. And, and Bob, one last thing, how, people, how can people get in touch with you? Um, well, uh, they can reach me at on my uh, through email or my phone. Uh, my phone number is uh, 321-239-0647. And if they would mention your name, that would be great. Now, again, that's 321-239-0647. And my email address is bob at commercialunderwriter.net. Bob at commercialunderwriter.net. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, everyone, everyone who's watching, uh, if you have enjoyed this segment, uh, give this video a like or leave some notes in the comments. Uh, any feedback, reach out to, uh, click on the link to the commercialunderwriter.net. Check that out as well. I'll post that there. Uh, Bob, thank you so much for taking the time today. This has been really great and to hear more about your story and your experience. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Nathan. I appreciate it.